Hello, fabulous scholars. Last time in Geraldine McCochran's The Canterbury Tales, uh, we heard the scholar's tale about Griselda, who was very, very patient with her husband, even though he was not very kind to her. And then the pilgrims started arguing after the story was done about what Griselda should have done or how her husband should have been nicer to her. And uh, the widow in the hat, the widow from Bath, is getting a little bit upset because all these other pilgrims, sorry, there she is, all these other pilgrims are trying to tell her uh, she's wrong and she doesn't like that. So we'll continue and we're about to hear, uh, let's see here, the widow's tale. But the pilgrims are still talking for just a moment more. Uh, the only treasures a man can bring a lady are his love and adoration, said the squire solemnly. The widow looked at him fondly, reached out and tousled his curly hair. Oh, bless you, child. Haven't you heard the old story? I'll tell you what a woman most wants. So now here's the widow's tale. What women most desire. In the old days of glory, when King Arthur's round table stood in Camelot, chivalrous knights sat and talked of love. Damsels embroidered tokens of love. Squires composed love songs and jousts were fought over love. Hardly a word was spoken that was not about love. Only when men and women met did they talk about the weather instead. How blue the sky is, lady, a young man would say. And how warm the breeze, she would reply. And how is your mother, he would ask. Quite well, considering the weather, she would answer. Then he would bow and she would smile and they would go their separate ways. So it was at Camelot until Sir Salvio met one day with a lady in the wood. How blue the sky is today, said the lady, smiling encouragingly. Almost as blue as your eyes, my lady, he said. The lady blushed. And how prettily the water glistens in the brook. Almost as sweet as a taste of your lips, said the knight, and he kissed her. The lady picked up her green skirts and shrieked and swooped like a parrot in and out of the trees all the way back to the courts. So there's Sir Salvio talking with a lady in the woods, not about the weather. So the over-romantic knight was summoned before the assembly of the round table. This most starless of knights, said King Arthur, has cast his shadow over an honorable lady in the woods. What punishment should he suffer? In one voice, the other knights cried, Death! Cut off his head! Sir Salvio was most dismayed, but he bowed low from the waist, and Arthur unsheathed his sword. One last question, said the knight, straightening up again. Perhaps the excellent Queen Guinevere can tell me, what exactly did I do that offended the lady in the woods? What did you do? exclaimed the queen. You spoke of kisses when you should have been talking about the weather. Ah, I, I see. Sir Salvio sighed and bowed from the waist again. I don't think I understand women. The shadow of the sword touched his bare neck. The ladies of the court began to faint. Like sheaths of corn behind a sickle, they fell daintily to the floor. The queen herself looked with regret on Sir Salvio. His hair was the color of powdered sage and as curly as the tendrils of a honeysuckle. Wait, wait, she said, fluttering her hands. Since this young man seeks to understand women, let him answer me this riddle. Let him tell me what women most desire. That means what they want the most. And he shall live. Arthur leaned wearily on his sword. Fine, you have a year and one day, boy, in which to discover what women most desire. As Sir Salvio left Camelot, his knees trembled and his heart still pounded. What chance did he have of answering the queen's riddle? What man can guess what a woman is thinking? 
What do women most desire, he pondered, as his horse shambled along the country roads. Beauty, surely. He passed a, oh, but then he remembered money. Surely would, women would want gold more than anything else in the world. He passed a young farm girl on the road, arm in arm with a shepherd. Excuse me, young lady, what do you want most in this world? Is it to be rich or to be beautiful? The farm girl hung more heavily on the shepherd's arm and sighed. Neither, sir. All I want is to be married. Aha! The knight took a quill and wrote the answer on the sleeve of his shirt. Then he turned back, thinking he would take the answer to the queen at once. On the way, he passed a convent where nuns were tending a field of beans. Ugh, what the girl told me cannot be true, thought Sir Salvio with dismay. So many women choose to live unmarried. Just then, he passed a roadside church. In front of it, a woman was down on her knees, praying fervently. Forgive me for interrupting your prayers, said Sir Salvio, but what is it that you are so earnestly asking of God? The woman got painfully to her feet and picked up her baskets again. Only what every woman wants, I suppose, she said bitterly. I want to have a baby. Aha, said Sir Salvio, and he noted the words on his sleeve. By sunset, there were 12 other words written below it. Sir Salvio's heart sank lower and lower. Only one answer could be right. How was he to choose the one from the rest? He rubbed his bare neck and thought of the sword awaiting it. Farther and farther he traveled. Taking ship, he sailed to a hot and passionate country where gypsy women dressed in scarlet and their skin sweated as they danced under the moon. There's Sir Salvio. Notice he's got some words written on his sleeve. What do women most desire? He asked a girl as she whirled past his stirrup, tossing her skirts. Fun, of course, cried the gypsy girl. Fun and laughter and love and music and passion and the clash of the moon and the spark of the stars. Oh, and to stay young forever. Thank you very much. He could find no scrap of sleeve on which to write all her answers. On and on and on he traveled through lands of ice where women could not part their frozen lips to answer him through wastelands where all the women wanted was food for their children. Finally, time was running short and he turned back to keep his appointment with the king's deadline. To be one day late to Camelot would dishonor him for the other knights would think he was afraid of the sword's edge. So it was that he came to be riding at a gallop through the forests of Dean on the very last day when he saw an old crone boiling up water in a cauldron that means a really big iron pot. Old woman, he shouted out, boil my shirt, for I have slept in it this year past, and today I must present myself to the Queen of England. He handed her the shirt on which he had scrawled the answer of every woman he had met. The old woman held up each sleeve in turn. What's this then? She lisped through two black teeth. Love, money, Passion, power, beauty, children, long life, fame. Well, these are the things of women's wishes. Mind your business and boil my shirt. I am sick and tired of asking what women most desire. The shirt plunged into the cauldron and the bubbles that rose gave strange sighs. Oh, what women most desire? Oh, I could tell you that, Lord, but my answer has a price. What I desire most is to marry a handsome knight with hair of just your color and curls of just your kind. If I were to tell you the answer, you would have to marry me. I'd gladly marry even you, Lady Cockroach, for the sake of the right answer. But I've heard so many now that I dare say I've already heard yours from someone else. The old woman shrugged her humped shoulders and gave him back his shirt, dripping and steaming. 
what women most desire is. And we'll find out next time, scholars. Bye.